It's an honor uh, to be here. I'm at the National Press Club. The first generation wireless 1G was voice. The second generation 2G allowed both talk and text. The third generation 3G, the internet in a limited way. And today's technology, 4G, completed that digital migration. But if anyone tells you that they know the details of what 5G is going to become, run the other way. I have to tell people 5G is a killer. I'm Mark Steele. Anybody who hasn't heard me, I'm a weapon systems head up display expert, one of the leading experts in the world. I've actually brought cover in relation to this, and the reason I became an expert was because I invent them. What I'm going to say to you today, do not believe a single word I say. Not one. I want you to do your own research. You'll find it's absolutely terrifying. You got your body cover? Aye, aye, aye. Oh, good lad. Right, because I can talk to that. This 5G rollup is a weapon system. I've got a letter with central government because I know about weapon systems more than anything other. In uh, Britain, in a place in the uh, north of England called Gateshead, uh, a scientist there called Mark Steele has been um, very publicly and actively warning people about the effects of LED streetlights, which he says in Gateshead are emitting now 5G. Right, uh, what's the crack? Yeah, I'm just having a word with these Gateshead Council workers about replacing this. Uh, this, these transmitters on these lights that are causing harm and uh, assault in the community. This is an existential threat to the economy, to the environment and humanity. Well, if these transmitters are everywhere, then everyone's at risk, surely. There's a lot of confusion about what 5G is. The G stands for generation. So you started off with the first uh, transmitter system. Back in the 1980s. In the 80s, yes. Yeah, so you had 1G, then you had 2G. And as the generations moved on, you started to see uh, more uh, complex uh, signal systems, uh, cleverer uh, pieces of uh, you know, antenna designs, etc., etc. So the whole thing became uh, more data, quicker data, quicker downloads, etc., etc. However, 5G is something completely different. You must consider the whole part played by electricity in nature. Human beings cannot go on developing in the same way in an atmosphere permeated on all sides by electric currents and radiations. It has an influence on the whole development of man. This life of men in the midst of electricity, notably radiant electricity, will presently affect them in such a way that they will no longer be able to understand the news which they receive so rapidly. The effect is to damp down their intelligence. Such effects are already seen today. Even today, you can notice how people understand the things that come to them with far greater difficulty than they did a few decades ago. Rudolf Steiner, 1924. Rudolf Steiner noted that in 1924, since then our atmosphere has become far more permeated with electric waves of widely diverse types. There's no doubt now that electric waves, electromagnetic forces cause direct biological effects. There's thousands of peer-reviewed papers on this subject. There's no doubt about it, but what are these effects? How are they affecting us? What can we do about it? We're now at a stage where we're putting in what's called 5G, which is a special type of broadcast for high density information transfers. And it turns out that this is the same frequency bands that are used in crowd dispersal. Five G first and foremost is densification, so it's significantly more transmitters in close proximity to uh, a human, and it is also a sophisticated, illegal, unlawful transmitter. What I mean by that 
is it is a high gain dielectric lens antenna and what that allows 5G transmitters to do is to 3D map its environment in your home. The 868 megahertz frequency is specific for battlefield interrogation systems, so sub gigahertz. It allows the signal to travel through concrete brickwork with ease and it can actually uh, data gather. It is a target acquiring system. Phased array is basically radar off the battlefield. It is extremely good at identifying targets and being able to lock on the targets. And not only that, it can specifically target you as an individual. So any judge sitting on a, uh, an interesting case, let's say, any lawyer, any barrister, anybody doing any work that is potentially controversial, your life could be a threat. So the antenna design that you currently have on top of these LED streetlights, masquerading as a control management system, it basically battlefield interrogation equipment. The first phased array unit was actually called Mammoth, used by the Germans to identify Allied aircraft. Obviously things have moved on significantly since then. Our impulses are being redirected. We are living in an artificially induced state of consciousness that resembles sleep. Their intention to rule rests with the annihilation of consciousness. We have been lulled into a trance. They have made us indifferent to ourselves, to others. We are focused only on our own game. Please understand, they are safe as long as they are not discovered. Keep us asleep, keep us selfish, Almost immediately, I had neighbours knocking on the door, uh, talking about children bleeding from the nose. I had images posted on Facebook. And one neighbour in particular came to my door and mentioned the fact that since the LED street lighting had been installed, she was bleeding from the nose every single night. I thought it was unbelievable. However, I spoke to another neighbour who lived not far from the first lady who mentioned this and she also confirmed that since the LED street light had been installed, she also had started to develop nosebleeds and had never had nosebleeds before in her life. That then put me on a journey to investigate. I measured microwave radiation levels from the transmitters uh, on top of the LED street lights. Uh, the basic 868 megahertz, it was significantly higher than the current Council of Europe 1815 resolution, which is a maximum of 600 millivolts. I've measured up to th over 3,000 millivolts. Uh, five times, five to six times higher than the than the guidelines. Significantly higher than, than the current Council of Europe 1815 resolution, which states that 200 millivolts should be the maximum. The Bio Initiative report states that it should be significantly less than that. So we've got the Council of Europe, that's, you know, the, 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 the international criminal courts are stating that, you know, the learned judges have said that 200 millivolts and I'm measuring in bedrooms in Gateshead, minimum, minimum 600 and up to 4,000. Does this mean that in 2020, 2021, when 5G is destined to roll out globally, that you're gonna get those kind of readings everywhere all the time? Everywhere, all the time. Worse than that? Worse than that. Yes, 5G will connect the internet of everything. If something can be connected, it will be connected in the 5G world. Hundreds of billions of microchips connected in products from pill bottles to plant waterers requiring massive deployment of small cells. We won't wait for the standards. Now to make this work, Five, the 5G build-out is going to be very infrastructure intensive. We must reject the notion that the 5G future will be the sole provenance of urban areas. The 5G revolution will touch all corners and that's important.
the interconnected world of the future will be the result of decisions we must make today. issue before us today is Senate Bill 637 and Senate Bill 894, uh, the former by Senator Hugh and the latter by Senator Knopfs. We're going to invite the uh, first four witnesses in support of the legislation, and that would be John Jones with Sprint, David Lewis and Andy Emerson with AT&T, Neil Krevda with Verizon, and Frank Alcavetti Jr. with T-Mobile. So be straight with me. Is it true? It could be. No, well, come very, on. A, you know, very no few cases. Proof there was an unfortunate really uh, incident out in situation. Iowa. Oh, Look, gentlemen, have... practice these words in front of the mirror. Although we are constantly exploring the subject, currently there is no direct evidence that links cell phone usage to brain cancer. I'm Sharon Goldberg. I'm an internal medicine physician. I've practiced medicine for 21 years, and my background is mostly academic, internal medicine, hospital-based, clinical research, and medical education. I'm a certified Microsoft small business specialist. I've worked on space station designing the cabling system for the airlock module, where I was responsible for EMI, EMC analysis, which is electromagnetic interference, electromagnetic compatibility. I am a professor in the Department of Epidemiology, Biostatistics, and Occupational Health, and I teach there both toxicology and health effects of electromagnetic radiation. My name is Daphne Tachover, and I'm the founder of an organization called We Are the Evidence. Uh, we are an organization that represents the many adults and unfortunately many children who have become very sick from wireless technology radiation. There seems to be a couple false Easter eggs being put out there right now. I want to make sure we dispel that right off the gate. The effects of wireless on health scientifically are very, very clear. So it's always pushed back to the definition of an acceptable level of radiation. And that's what this is, by the way. This is about radiation. Wireless radiation has biological effects, period. My name is Dr. Angie Kolbeck. I've been reviewing the studies showing the impacts of wireless radiation on our health, and there are now thousands of studies showing the following adverse health impacts to wireless radiation. Cancer, oxidative damage, DNA damage, DNA failure. Things like you know, memory, uh, dizziness, anxiety, brain fog. Headaches, nosebleeds, cognitive problem, exhaustion. We have evidence of DNA damage, cardiomyopathy, which is the precursor of congestive heart failure. Short and long-term memory loss, decreased attention spans, lower reaction times, um, even involuntary contractions of muscles causing misalignments of spines and jaws. Disrupted immune function and change in stress proteins, reproductive and fertility effects. There are dozens and dozens of studies that show beyond any doubt what this uh, radiation is doing to our sperm. Now, if you take this, the, the cell phone out of your pocket, the sperm will recuperate within three to four months. What would not recuperate would be the damage to the DNA of the sperm. That is irreparable. The wife of the ex-governor of, of Indiana was diagnosed with glioblastoma. Same brain tumor Ted Kennedy had and John McCain had. Did you look at John McCain's car? This is a cell phone brain tumor. Um, LeBron James, one of our sports people, had a salivary gland tumor. That is another cell phone uh, uh, tumor. You didn't hear about it because immediately after that was discovered, he would pay, was paid by Samsung to become their spokesperson. We are seeing increases in, in brain tumors. Uh, we're seeing increases in Alzheimer's. We're seeing increases in uh, all of the neurotransmitter diseases, ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, um, Parkinson's. These are all disease systems that are known to be associated with low-level energy exposures. We're talking about 24-7, around-the-clock exposure, whatever you are and your whole body. You never get away from it. And it seems from our studies that maybe your immune system can cope with it for a time, but it will deteriorate. Then the irradiation will definitely damage cells at the deeper level, and the question is what will then happen? 
These are out of peer-reviewed papers, so these are not just hypochondriacs thinking that they're doing it. We, we're having real problems with this. This is no longer a subject for debate when you look at PubMed and the peer-reviewed literature. These effects are seen in all life forms, plants, animals, insects, microbes. So 5G is not a conversation about whether or not these biological effects exist. They clearly do. There is scientifically evidence that is so strong that you can be certain that the standards used by the FCC to manage health effects are wrong. We need to start measuring how much radiation are people being exposed to before we roll out 5G. There are four kinds of electromagnetic fields that we know are harmful to human health. So radio frequency radiation, magnetic fields, dirty electricity, and electric fields, okay? Our exposure, any given person, and all humans are affected by EMFs. What is our exposure in a, in a day? It's not one cell phone. It's cell phones, it's multiple wireless networks, it's smart meters, it's cell towers. It's this sandwich and it all adds up.